Hello friends, Shayla here, and today I'm here to wrap up the reading month of October. Today is Halloween, and happy Halloween to those of you who love Halloween. I am not the biggest Halloween person in the world, so I don't really dress up and do that whole thing at this point in my life, but regardless, I love that you all love Halloween. So yeah, anyways, that's besides the point here. Today we're here to wrap up what I read in the month of October. Through the first week of October, that's grouped into my previous wrap-up video, which was a recent reads. So I will leave that linked for you if you're curious what I read during that portion. But everything else here, I've got 10 novels and 14 volumes of manga. I'm going to blitz through the manga really quick. So if you're not interested in manga, here's the timestamp for when I start talking about the books. So you can go ahead and skip to that point if you're not interested in the manga. But I hope you guys will take an interest in manga as it's something I'm very passionate about and I do plan on continuing to talk more about on this channel. So let's go ahead and dig right in. So the first manga series I'm going to talk about is That Wolf Boy Is Mine. I read volumes two through four. Four is the end of the series. It's a nice little short manga series. This is about some boys who are ayakashi or kind of like demons that take on powers of animals and can transform themselves who befriend this girl who's new at their school, but they're very popular, and so it causes problems. Anyways, this is just a really sweet manga series, and it's a really great fit for the 24-hour Tezuka Readathon coming up on Saturday. But anyways, here's it, volume two, volume three, and volume four, just so you know what they look like. But this is a sweet series. I really loved it. Each of these got between four and five stars from me, and I highly recommend the series as a whole. Next up, I continued on in my read of Oron High School Host Club, so I read volumes five through eight. I thought the stuff from the anime pretty much wrapped up in volume six, but I was very wrong. Volume seven and eight contained a lot of content that's also included in the anime and I really loved this. Volume 8 was probably my favorite out of all of it because one of my favorite story arcs in the anime takes place in Volume 8. It's Casanova arc, or the Bossa Nova arc, as you call it. Anyways, those of you who are familiar with the show or the series at all know what I'm talking about, but this is a fun little story about a girl named Haruhi Fujioka who comes to school at her new high school, you know, in her clothes, like just regular clothes, because she's um, there on scholarship at this expensive private school, stumbles into this host club, ends up breaking something, and has to make a deal with these guys to work the money back, and they think she's a dude initially with all of this, and once they find out she's a girl, they're fiercely protective of her, and this just gives me all the happy, fun-loving feelings, and it's just a fun series. I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't, just because the shenanigans that ensue in this series are legendary and fantastic. Next up, I read the next four volumes in Waiting for Spring. This is like Dream and Sun meets basketball. <laughs> so this is about a group of boys on the basketball team who end up befriending this young woman and there's one that she particularly likes and he likes her and it's a little bit reverse harem but not fully not nearly as reverse harem as or on high school host club that is full on a reverse harem this has elements of re reverse harem but there are other girls and some of the guys like these other girls it's good it's really good it's really fun so there's volume two three four Ugh and five. I highly suggest picking this one up. This is a newer series. It's currently publishing. I think it's up to volume eight right now, but volume nine comes out soon. So I'm slowly collecting these and reading them and thoroughly enjoying them. Alrighty, these last three volumes of manga are all one-offs in series that, you know, I'm just reading because I can. The first is volume one of Absolute Boyfriend. This is about a teenage girl who continues to end up heartbroken, so she ends up in this situation where she's able to order, mail order, a boyfriend robot, and this is hilarious so far. The shenanigans already are insane. I was able to find the rest of the series on thrift books, so I did order it, and I think I spent like $17 for five volumes of manga, which is great. 
Considering this one is an older one, I think it's actually out of print. I had to go to thrift books to find it because it's older, but yes, I am really excited to continue on with Absolute Boyfriend. I've gotten so many comments on my Instagram about how this was like one of the first series some of these ladies had read. So it's just really fun to feel all their nostalgia while I'm reading it for the first time. It's just a blast, I'm really enjoying it. Next up we have volume five of Assassination Classroom. As you guys know, I'm slowly working my way through Assassination Classroom. I want to read the manga before I watch the anime, so I'm on volume five right now. For those of you who aren't familiar, Assassination Classroom is about a classroom full of kids who have been commissioned to kill their teacher by, or assassinate their teacher by a certain date before he decides to end the world. So it's really fun. There are shenanigans, there's suspense, there's all sorts of things. This actually does fall into another of the Tezuka prompts, as does Waiting for Spring and Oran High School Host Club and Absolute Boyfriend. Everything I've read <laughs> the rest of October has, um, would all fit. So if you're still looking for recommendations, I do have a separate recommendations video, which I will leave linked for you, but all of these ones I'm talking about also fit. So yes, volume five was really good. I really liked the story progression in volume five. So I'm excited to continue on to volume six during the readathon. And last but not least for the manga portion is the first volume of My Little Monster. This is about a young lady who's sent to kind of track down this delinquent boy and to get him to come back to school. Boy finds girl attractive, he starts coming to school, and again, we have shenanigans. This is really fun. I'll be reading volume two during the readathon. And I've, this is also a Kodansha title, and all the Kodansha titles are on sale through today, I believe. At Barnes & Noble, they were buy two, get one free, so I picked it up during that, and I really enjoyed it, this first volume, so I'm excited to continue on with the series. Alrighty, now that all of the manga is out of the way, we are in the book portion of this video, so let's go ahead and dig right in. I've got ten books. Five of them are series enders. I will leave those to the end of the video, and then I'll read. I'll talk about the other five first. So the first one we're going to talk about is Heron Complex by Sarah Kuhn, or Kuhn, I'm not sure how you say your last name, but this is essentially a story in a world where superhero powers are kind of coming to light, and we our main character is the assistant to one of these well-known superheroes, and in a certain instance, she has to go under disguise as this person, as this hero, and ends up revealing her own powers. And again, shenanigans ensue. This was a really fun read. I would give it like a 3.54 stars. You know, it's not anything revolutionary, but it was a really fun read, and I enjoyed my time with it. So if you're interested at all, I suggest picking it up. Next up, we have Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This is one that's been on my shelf for a long time. I do love The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. That was a five-star read for me. This one was four stars. I didn't love it quite as much as I loved the original. This one's a little more dystopian, where Remains of the Day was very, like, reflective. So they're just different types of stories. I still loved Ishigo's writing. I thought the story was engaging enough in this one, so I don't fault it for that. I just didn't enjoy it quite as much. So this one's four stars. It's still a solid read, and I did still enjoy it. So if you not tr have not tried Ichigo's writing but you like Dystopian, I definitely would recommend picking this one up. Next up, we have Beautiful Oblivion by Jamie McGuire. This is another one of the Maddox Brothers books. As you guys know, I'm slowly working through all the Maddox Brothers books. And I really liked this one. I think it's probably my favorite in the Maddox Brothers series so far. I really like Cammy and Trent. I think they're a great couple. And I really like how theirs was much more slow burn, trying to figure out friendship and romantic relationship and the boundary that that is. I thought that exploration was very well done in here. And it was just really, really good. I really enjoyed this. So... If you like contemporaries that are a little more hard-hitting and deal with some tougher things, I definitely recommend checking out Jamie McGuire's work. I've been really pleased. I've read four of her books this year, and I've really been enjoying my exploration of her writing. It's been really fun. So, yes, I definitely recommend checking out the Maddox Brothers series by Jamie McGuire. Next up, we have Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Rowanhorse. This is a solid four-star urban fantasy read for me. This is about a monster hunter and all of her adventures. I thought this was a really fun read. I really liked getting to know more about the Native American culture through this novel. I thought it was very well done. I'm excited for the next book in the series because this is very clearly, you know, a world that this author wants to use as a sandbox and play in a little bit more. So I'm excited to see what else she'll do in here. And I just really enjoyed learning more about their culture and their beliefs 
through this novel. I thought that was very well done and very well worked through and I highly suggest picking up Trail of Lightning if you're at all interested. And last but not least for this portion of the video is Haven by Mary Lindsay. This is a gender-bent Beauty and the Beast retelling. It was okay. I didn't love it but I didn't hate it. So I'm giving it a solid three at this point. It wasn't drudgery to read it necessarily but it wasn't the most amazing book I've ever read. It's pretty standard. I was hoping for a little more from it and it fell into some cliches that I didn't really love or enjoy. So yeah, I'm just giving it a three. It's average. I might try reading it again. I might not have just been in a great headspace when I read it because I just finished this. But yeah, right now I'm feeling like it's a three. It's not great, but it's not awful. So take that for what you will. Again, I didn't hate it. So <laughs> It might just not be my kind of writing. The chapters were really extra short and that might have been part of it because it ended up breaking up the story more quickly than I was hoping. So I don't know. That might have been part of it, but I don't know. I just kind of feel meh about this book. I don't feel great about it, but I don't feel awful about it. So it's just kind of right there in the middle. So a solid three. Alrighty, let's get into these series enders that I've read this month because there have been some really popular ones this month. So the first one being The Raven King by Maggie Steve Otter. I was satisfied with the ending of this one. I know a lot of people weren't. And I pretty much saw most of the ending coming. I mean, I wasn't necessarily super surprised. How everything went down was a bit of a surprise, but I wasn't surprised at the twist, I guess you could say. Um, I can't say much more without super spoiling the series. <laughs> So yes, I really enjoyed my read of The Raven Cycle. The Raven King was a fun read. It kept me engaged. I really liked certain ways this series wrapped up and in other ways I was just okay with it. So I'm giving it a solid four. I think The Raven Cycle, I pretty much gave the whole series four stars. So if you're interested in the series at all, I do suggest picking it up. It's a fun time. It's a fun ride. So definitely check it out. Next up, we have Timeless by Gail Carriger. This is the final book in the Parasol Protectorate series. I, again, really loved how this series wrapped up. This is a five book series, so we've long time been invested in these characters. You see them grow in so many ways, and I just thought this was a really fun conclusion. I gave this last book four stars. Most of the series got between four and five stars for me, so again, this is a series I would wholly recommend. I think Gail Carriger's writing is amazing. She's so witty and so fun and so sassy, especially for this time period. So I'm really excited to explore more of her work because she is a author that I'm really just, I just enjoy her writing and her wit and her sass. So if you're looking for some sassy writing with some sassy female characters, definitely check out Gal Carriger. All of that rhymed. That was not planned. That was kind of awesome. <laughs> Alrighty, next up we have Bright We Burn by Kirsten White. This is the third and final book in the Conqueror Saga. I loved this ending so much. It's somewhere between 4.5 and 5 stars for me. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I do have a whole video where I give you five reasons to read the Conqueror Saga, so I will leave that linked for you. I'll give you a few more details there, but the character development that we're into by this third book is amazing. The writing was so smooth in this novel. I could not hardly put it down. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. So the first book's a little bit choppy, but I promise the other two are much better writing wise. So I do suggest picking up the series as a whole. It does get dark and gritty at points, but I promise it's worth it. I was in tears by the end of the series. I was so happy with the ending. It just made my day. So definitely check out The Conqueror Saga if you haven't. Next up is another one. Well, these last two you will probably see on a lot of people's wrap-ups this month because they are big, big releases and big series enders. So the first up is Muse of Nightmares by, by Lainey Taylor. This is the second book in the Strange the Dreamer duology. I loved the ending of this book. I really liked how things wrapped up. She left the world open so she can't come revisit this world and I seriously hope she does because once we learn more about the world and the magic in this book, oh my gosh, it was amazing. And I really like the notes that the story took. I highly recommend The Strange to the Dreamer duology. I'm giving this one five stars. It's fully earned. I am so satisfied 
with the ending of this story arc. I think it concludes perfectly. It's exactly what I needed and I am super happy with it. So take that for what you will. If you guys want a full Strange the Dreamer Muse of Nightmares review, let me know in the comments down below and I will probably film that for you. But otherwise, just know that I loved this. It was amazing. My read through was so good. I cried at multiple points in this series, especially in this second novel. And again, I hope Lainey Taylor comes back and plays in the sandbox of this world because there's so much she can do with it. And last but not least is one of the biggest YA releases of the year, and that is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass. I'm a total trash can for this series. I'm not ashamed of the fact that I'm a trash can. And this book gave me so much life. I read it in three sittings, and it's a thousand pages. <laughs> it's 980 pages if I'm specific. But this was a big book. A lot goes down in this book. Everything is essential. If you thought things didn't matter in some of the early books, you're so wrong, especially by this last book. Oh my gosh. Everything is so interconnected and tied together. And the ending was exactly what I wanted it to be. And I can't tell you any more because there's seven other books you have to read. Because this is technically book eight in the Throne of Glass series, if you count the Assassin's Blade. And it's an amazing, wonderful journey of a series. For me, the series really starts to pick up about book three. I really enjoyed it from book three on. The first two books, I did not enjoy nearly as much as I enjoyed the rest of the series. So take that for what you will. <laughs> but this conclusion was so epic. It was so everything I needed. I have a lot of thoughts. I've thought about doing a discussion video on it, but everybody's doing a discussion video on it. So if you want one, I will do one. Again, let me know down below. But just know that I was so satisfied with this book. There's a certain point, chapter 89, I believe it is. I, I died. I, I literally had to close the book and have a moment and cry and get it out of my system before I continued on. And what happens in that chapter does affect characters throughout the rest of the novel, so it's very important. You can't skip it, <laughs> but I wouldn't want you to skip it. And yes, it is so good. Like I say, I'm very satisfied with how all of this ended. I was not, I was pleasantly surprised by parts of the ending, but other parts of the ending are exactly how I expected them to be, and I'm totally okay with that. This is a five-star read for me. It's one of my favorite reads all year. I highly recommend the Throne of Glass series. Again, the first two books are not my favorites. Keep going. If you get to the end of book three and you don't like it, then maybe don't continue on because book three was my favorite, one of my favorites. I would probably say Kingdom of Ashes is my favorite in the entire series just because it's so satisfying, but this wouldn't be so satisfying without all the other books. So yes, if you can get through Air of Fire and you enjoy it, keep going. The rest of the series is wonderful. You go through the ups and downs with all of these characters. You see them deal with so much and it was so satisfying. That's all I can say. I'm a little, I do have to say, my only pet peeve is that this is such a gold cover and the rest of them are so gray that I'm a little annoyed, <laughs> but outside of that, that's just a purely aesthetic thing and I know I'm not the only one who feels that way. But anyways, the book itself, the contents of the book are amazing. Go check it out, please do. All right, friends, so that is my reading wrap up for the month of October. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite read of October was. If you're new here, hi, I'm Shay. Welcome. Thanks for checking out this video. And please hit subscribe and click the little bell icon so you know when to come hang out with me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.